Hello, this is Eric White. This is the next screencast in a series of screencasts on writing recursive pure functional transformations. In the last screencast, I introduced linked to XML and functional construction of linked to XML. Functional construction is an integral piece of writing recursive pure functional transformations. We're going to make extensive use of that capability when we write these transformations. There's a minimum amount of information that I need to cover with regards to linked XML in order to teach how to write these types of recursive transformations. The two topics that we need to cover are namespaces and names, which we're going to cover in this screencast. And then in the next screencast, we're going to cover link to XML access methods. That's an interesting topic in its own right. As we saw in the previous screencast on XML, or as you probably know already, if you are an experienced XML developer, XML can be in namespaces. When you put a name on an XML element or on an XML attribute, it has a local name and it optionally can have a namespace name. We need to understand just a bit about how to deal with namespaces and names in linked XML. Here is a bit of code that shows some examples of uses of namespaces and names in linked XML. First thing that you'll see up here is that the way that you create a namespace object in C Sharp is that you simply assigned a string to a variable that is declared to be of a type of X namespace. In the implementation of linked XML, that equals operator right here is overloaded and in the overload, it transforms that string into an X namespace object I'll talk about why it's done that way in just a minute. After creating an X namespace object, you combine the X namespace object with a local name in order to create a qualified name. Of course, the canonical way to create an X name is that you use the xname.get method. And with the xname.get method, you pass a local name and a namespace name, and that returns an xName object, and you can assign that to a variable. In this case, it's assigned to the variable with the name of C. Another thing that you can do is that you can use this idiom here where you effectively add an X namespace object to a string, and that will give you a qualified X name object. So the way that this works is that in the linked XML implementation, it overloads this plus operator. And when it overloads that plus operator where one side of the addition is an X namespace object and the other side of the addition is a string, it then produces a qualified X name from that operation. And you will notice here that you also do not use the X name constructor to create a new X name in linked XML. You use this idiom of either addition or you use this function call of xname.get. There's a reason that linked XML takes this approach and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in the screencast on this reason, but I'm going to mention it. There's other material that I have out there that discusses this in depth. And the reason is that if you have an X namespace object that is assigned a given name, when you transform that name into the X namespace object, you'll always get back the exact same object. Same thing is true with X name objects. If there is an X name object that consists of a given namespace and local name, it will result in the exact same object. So if you were to declare another variable down here, I declare this other variable root two, and I assign aw plus root. In other words, it has the same qualified name as this other variable up here of root. Well, in fact, root and root two actually contain references to the exact same object. The short answer as to why this is done is that then in the access methods, 
when comparing a given X name against another X name, it's super easy to do that comparison. You only need to compare object identity. So it means that the access methods, in other words, the methods to get the list of elements or the list of descendants for a particular element, these methods execute very, very quickly. And that is a key goal because we'll be calling those access methods a lot, passing xName objects to those access methods, and we want the performance of those access methods to be really good. But that's enough information for this particular screencast. We don't really need to focus on that particular aspect here. What we really want to do is focus on the mechanics of creating X namespace objects and X name objects. I'll get rid of that, we don't need it. Once you have created a qualified name, in other words, this C variable, this root variable, and this child variable are qualified names that consist of a namespace and a name, you can then use those xName objects in functional construction of an XML tree. So down here, we can create a new X element. And for the name of that X element, we pass this root variable or this root object, and that will assign that particular qualified name to that element. For just a minute, we're going to skip these two X attribute calls, and we're going to look at the new X element below those two X attributes. And here we use the C X name, and below that we use the child X name. And these two X attributes up above, what these do is these set up the necessary characteristics so that when you serialize this XML, if the tag for the root or the tag for an attribute is in the AdventureWorks namespace, it will be serialized with the aw prefix. And in a similar way, if the tag for an element or a tag for an attribute is in this ct namespace, then it will be serialized with this ct prefix. So if we run it, we see in fact that the root has the aw prefix and it's therefore in this aw namespace. The ct namespace is declared right there and this second element, this child element, is declared to be in that CT namespace. And here we can see the equivalent code in the JavaScript implementation of linked XML. A couple of interesting points. Whereas in C Sharp, in order to achieve atomization, the C Sharp implementation of linked XML makes the constructor of the X namespace class and the constructor of the X name class be protected. You can't get at them. And instead, it overloads the equals operator and it overloads the addition operator. And in those overloads of those operators, it does the atomization. There's no control over the object returned by constructor, so therefore the .NET implementation of link to XML had no option but to do it that way. In contrast, in JavaScript, first of all, there are no operator overloads, so it's not possible to use that mechanism in the language to do the atomization. And in fact, in JavaScript, you do have control over what object is returned by a constructor function. Therefore, the constructor function itself can do the atomization. So the idiom in the JavaScript implementation of linked XML is different. You actually have to use the constructor. You have to new up the X namespace objects and you have to new up the X name objects. So here we can see that we are creating a new X namespace object, assigning it to AW and a new X namespace object and assigning it to CT. There is the same method in the JavaScript implementation of link to XML, which is that there is this xname.get method where you pass in a local name and a namespace name as strings and that returns an atomized object to you. But there also is this other idiom where you can new up an X name and you can pass in this AW, this AdventureWorks object, and quote, add it, unquote, to a local name. Now it looks as though this is making use of object overloading, but it actually is not. 
What this is doing is this is simply taking the expanded name of the AdventureWorks namespace name and concatenating that to the root local name. So in other words, I could go in here and I could ch take this namespace name, I can put it in there in curly braces like that, and take away the reference to the X namespace object. And this is effectively what gets passed to that X name constructor. The X name constructor then notices the curly braces there, extracts the namespace name, does the atomization on it, gets the local name, and then combines the X namespace name and the local name to create an atomized X name object. This is all the detail we need to go into in this particular screencast, we don't really need to know the mechanisms by which this works. Suffice it to say that the JavaScript implementation of linked XML uses the exact same approach of atomization of X name and X namespace objects to achieve good performance. I'll put this code back as it was. So here we have basically the identical code in JavaScript to what we had in C sharp. And if I run this example, we get the exact same XML out of the example. There's a minor difference in the formatting of the attributes in that the JavaScript implementation of linked XML has the capability of aligning attributes each on a separate line. That's a more convenient way to look at serialized XML when you are indenting the XML. I'll mention just a couple other points. Linked XML uses a similar mechanism to enable you to control the serialization to use the default namespace. So for instance here, this root element is in the aw namespace. Right here we can see that we're assigning the aw prefix to that namespace, so therefore that's how it gets serialized. We can use the link to XML idiom of simply supplying a name of XML ns along with the namespace name, and this will then assign that namespace to be the default namespace. So if I run it, we can see, in fact, that's what happens. That root element is now in the default namespace. And the exact same idiom works in the JavaScript implementation of linked XML. And if I run it, we see that now that root element is in the default namespace. Just to demonstrate one more aspect of namespace creation and serialization is that I'm also free to put together an X namespace object and a local name right here in the middle of doing the functional construction. So if I add a new call to X element there, and here I'll say aw plus child2, I'm effectively adding or concatenating that namespace name with the element name with the local name of child2. And if I run it, we can see that in fact that child2 is in the default namespace, which is the adventureworks.com namespace. And if I were to change this code back so that it no longer uses the default namespace, then now we can see that child2 is in the namespace using the appropriate prefix. When we are working with OpenXML markup, we are almost always working with XML that is in a namespace. So it's important to understand these various idioms so that when you see these idioms in the recursive pure functional transforms, you'll be familiar with them. That's all I'm gonna cover in this screencast. In the next screencast, I'm going to discuss the various axis methods of linked XML.